sold out concerts, outrageous monster jams, nail biting matchups. It's not just the entertainers and athletes that make these events possible. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Lightbulb, a show where we shine the light on one particular subject, giving you a better look at the topic on hand. On this episode, we're gonna talk about super stadiums. Now, sports stadiums host arguably entertainment's most exciting events, but without the structure, the experience, or even the event wouldn't be possible. Now, not anyone can build a sports stadium. These projects are huge endeavors that require a lot of money and a lot of time. Just ask Logan Gherkin, the Director of Project Development for the Sports and Entertainment Group at Mortensen, the firm responsible for U.S. Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Vikings. He said, U.S. Bank Stadium was a 10-year journey that involved many years of public dialogue, studies, design, and budgets, all leading up to actually kicking off the project. Timelines seem to be similar for other sports arenas. John Nemeth, the sports design leader in the Americas for AECOM, the company that led the design for the Sacramento Kings Golden One Center, said that the process from idea to build can take several years to a decade or more. While the design process itself can take nine to 14 months and construction can take up to 24 months, he said often the more challenging part is generating consensus on a project from establishing the need to locating an appropriate site to securing funding, community support, league support, and environmental approvals. It's not just time that makes these projects so challenging. The enormous size of everything just becomes a unique challenge. Logan pointed out that enclosed NFL stadiums are some of the largest column-free spaces in the entire world and often incorporate kinetic architecture that is unprecedented. In addition, rarely are two areas or levels of the project the same. Every square foot has unique conditions, and is packed with the latest technology and equipment, and all of it is designed to function under the demands of having tens of thousands of people all descending at once. See, these projects are not simple builds. But if you want to push the envelope architecturally and construct a super stadium, things become that much more complex. It really is a very unorthodox geometry. It's something that had never been done before, and it has been extraordinarily difficult and complicated to build. Logan said the U.S. Bank Stadium has the largest pivoting doors in the world, a feat that required detailed computer modeling and on-site fabrication to achieve. As Logan hinted, sports centers like U.S. Bank Stadium, Golden One Center, and Atlanta's Mercedes-Benz Stadium couldn't be possible without the existing technological advancements. I asked Bill if he thought that the Falcons' new home could have been built without the technology we have today. No, absolutely not. Rob Rothblatt, lead designer of Golden One Center, said design technologies are wonderful for helping realize what would otherwise just remain as ideas amongst architects or as drawings to be shown in museums. His colleague, Alistair McGregor, lead engineering design at AECOM, commented on the power of technology as a communication tool. He said, without being able to prototype the performance of the building, we would have been unable to communicate the value of the innovative design solution and would have likely taken a traditional approach. This would have had significant effects to the building design. For example, no operable hangar doors. The complexity of the Mercedes Museum was only achieved by using a couple of computer modeling programs. One of them is called Rhino, and that allowed us to figure out how we could actually get this roof to open and close. I can say with a great deal of conviction that we could have never done that with those kinds of super sophisticated computer programs. When designing and building a sports center, one can't forget that they're creating a structure that embodies a city's pride. Arthur Blank said he wanted to create an icon for the city of Atlanta and for the state of Georgia. He wanted to do something that had really never been done before. John from AECOM said, in the case of Golden One Center, the Sacramento Kings knew from the start that they wanted a project that was uniquely Sacramento. That was a driving focus for the project and it's reflected in everything. Once these projects are complete, the hope is to bring a surge of economic growth to the community. According to Logan, U.S. Bank Stadium has spurred on more than $1 billion of additional investment in the surrounding neighborhood. It has helped add new vibrancy to a neighborhood once dominated by service parking lots that are now filled with jobs, restaurants, housing, and a beautiful new city park. 
As you can tell, there is so much to cover when it comes to the design, construction, and engineering of modern day super stadiums. For more programming on architecture and construction, be sure to click over to our channel and check out our other videos. To see what else Built Worlds is up to, head over to our website, builtworlds.com. I look forward to seeing you guys next time during National Engineering Week. Till then, you guys take care. And thanks to our friends at Sopri Systems for making this episode of Lightbulb possible.